Amos Somnath Biswas. Um, I had the um, conversational experience products for the uh, for Stepstone, um, and uh, prior to that, I've kind of I've now been in the industry for now really 20, 20 plus years. Uh, most of my work in the past uh, half a decade or plus has been in the NLP space. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you for this opportunity. Pleasure to be speaking with all of you. So today, obviously, my goal is to kind of talk to you about the job search companion that we have uh, built within Stepstone. Um, and what I'm planning to cover over the next uh, 20, 25 minutes now is uh, the goal is to A, first give you a reason why do we really need to have the conversational experience in the job search uh, process. Um, what do the users actually want to talk to us? Do they even want to talk to us? If And if so, about what? Um, and if it works out, then how do we kind of scale it up without compromising on quality? And then finally, I'll kind of give you guys a quick flavor of what the future looks like, at least for us. So that's my goal. Um, let's see how we kind of go about it. But uh, before I kind of jump into the uh, the solution, uh, maybe just taking a step back and talking to you a little bit about Stepstone, just so that you have context as well. So the Stepstone group, uh, we are essentially um, think of us as a marketplace where you have companies who come and advertise for uh, listings uh, where they're kind of looking for talent. And then obviously we have people who are interested in jobs uh, who uh, visit our various uh, job portals uh, and apply for those uh, same jobs. So today, uh, around we we have around uh, you know four thousand uh, employees dedicated and focused on um, helping one hundred and sixty k plus uh, SMBs and enterprises find the right uh, talent for themselves. And equally, we are kind of uh, equally dedicated and focused on helping someone find the right job for them. Uh, we are. Uh, uh, just uh, we are kind of uh, close to around billion dollar um, in size in terms of revenue. Uh, we spread across uh, Germany, United Kingdom, United States, um, and um, uh, I think in terms of number of portals, it's uh, you know we we have you know around I think 30, 30 plus uh, job portals. Uh, some of the common names that you might have heard about uh, would be the likes of Total Jobs in uh, the UK job site, CWJ jobs. So there are multiple uh, job portals that uh, we today manage um, and own. Now diving uh, straight into uh, the job search companion uh, experience that we talked about, um, worth kind of us taking a step back and, um, and trying to kind of understand how does the job search experience differ compared to any other online experience. So just to kind of prove a point, I've you know taken an extreme example of you of someone kind of buying, say, a bottle of Coca-Cola or a book online. Um, now, you, when you compare that with a job search experience, the size of the transaction is rarely life impacting when it comes down to any other transaction. So when you're say buying something, say a bottle of Coke or a book, um, it's not going to impact your life that much. Compare that with applying for a job and then being able to kind of land that job, it is definitely a life impacting event. So there is a lot of anticipation, there's a lot at stake, uh, and therefore there's a lot of emotion involved as well. Um, second is when you are buying anything online, rarely would you ask the question, am I good enough? Um, you can ask whether I want to buy it or not, whether I can afford it or not, should I be buying it or not, but rarely will, will there be an element of introspection in terms of, am I good enough? Am I good enough for this book? Am I good enough for this bottle of Coke? Uh, you will never ask that question. Um, third is the supplier will never um, judge you. So uh, and never will an Amazon judge you for buying a book or, you know, uh, you know, uh, any other online store or, you know, Tesco or someone judge you for buying a bottle of Coke. But here, uh, when you know for a fact that you will actually get judged, which again kind of brings in that element of stress and emotion involved in that. Um, rarely will you have to kind of keep doing this again. You will never hear um, a Tesco saying, hey, today many people uh, said that they were interested in this bottle of Coke. We have a number of applicants. We are going to basically consider and get back to you whether we will give you the bottle of Coke or not. Does not happen. But that is exactly the case that happens in the case of a job search. And finally, rarely is the probability of being disappointed that high. So most of the online transactions, you know, all things being fine, you will end with uh, you know, a success uh, in terms of the transaction being completed. But in the, when it comes down to job search, more often than not, 
uh, it will result in a disappointment. It is only say, you know, one in X uh, times when you apply, will you actually kind of end up uh, with landing that job. So um, compared to any other online transaction, a job search is an incredibly stressful task, requires multiple uh, attempts, is definitely life impacting, more often than not, is going to end up in disappointment and is a very lonely activity. So that's essentially the user experience that we are trying to manage and emulate in, in the digital space. Uh, and as you as you can you would have kind of gathered by now, what we are trying to basically we, we kind of uh, arrived at was that this is an emotionally charged um, experience. This is a very lonely experience. And so the thought process from our side was, and whilst you know our our online journeys are doing fantastically well. We have great conversions. We have people very happy with the kind of jobs that they find. Uh, but the idea was to kind of take it one step further. And overall, um, as, a, as a digital solution, the, uh, the vision that we had was uh, why not kind of go for a job search companion where your job search companion is a, you know, is trust, is a trusted companion who knows me, brings me the best jobs, makes it all easy. And I feel that Stepstone is always there and cares for my success. Now, if you focus on some of the key elements that we talked about up here in terms of in the vision statement, the element of building trust, the element of making it natural and easy, the element of having that element of care and empathy, um, our natural thought process went into that a conversation seems to be like an obvious channel to kind of at least explore. So that's where the genesis of the idea of uh, conversational experience for the job search companion came in. And, um, uh, but once, once we were at that point, then the question was to kind of take a step back and say, okay, look, we want to build this, but do the users really want, uh, want to talk to us? If they, do they really want to chat with us? If so, um, about what? Um, even if they want to chat with us, are we able to generate enough value for the user? Whilst generating value for the user, are we able to generate enough value for the company? And if so, are we able to do it at scale? So these were the questions that we kind of came up with. And these, I'll kind of talk about the North Star metrics, but these were essentially the metrics that the North Stars that we kind of defined for ourselves. And so at this point, uh, obviously there was a decision point in terms of should we kind of go ahead and build the, build the bot or uh, should, we, uh, should we take a different path? And what we wanted to do is we wanted to kind of layer it out. So we said, okay, technology comes in next or comes in later. Let's first, first find out whether there is a product market fit in terms of the chat solution as such. So we actually started off with a human to human job search companion uh, where we uh, kind of uh, borrowed some of our colleagues from customer service, gave them a general briefing, some amount of training, and we said, look, someone's going to come and chat with you about job search. You have to kind of help them find the job um, and you know, assist them with any kind of requirements. And this was mainly to try and see, A, kind of get a sense. Before we went down the route of investment in technology, the idea was to see whether the idea itself has legs or not. Um, so we kind of started off with this. We spent around uh, two, uh, three months to kind of just you know, mature out the solution. Uh, and once uh, we kind of uh, once we kind of got it to some element of stability in terms of service, uh, of service uh, we took a step back and we kind of analyzed the learnings from that. And what we kind of learned uh, from uh, from the human to human uh, chat was first things first is this is this is not related to the AI part of it, but this is a learning nevertheless. Uh, and in some sense, it's connected. Uh, one of the first things we did when we were trying to kind of use our uh, colleagues to uh, to uh, service this chat was we kind of like any other scenario, we kind of gave them a call sheet and we said, look, uh, this is, these are the questions you're supposed to ask. This is a sequence in which you're supposed to ask. Uh, this is how you respond, blah, blah, blah. And um, no one actually followed it. None of the uh, agents, none of the colleagues followed it because um, fact is every individual is different. Uh, and you are kind of, if you go down uh, the route of giving them um, a call sheet, you are actually kind of doing yourself a disfavor uh, uh, because over here, the main idea is to kind of understand from the human to human conversation in terms of what the flow should be. So after, uh, after we kind of had that realization and we kind of uh, you know, got those learnings, we kind of took, did a 180 and we basically said, okay, fair enough. Uh, we gave our colleagues the goals saying, when someone comes, these are the four data points that you're supposed to collect, uh, keep it as polite, keep it as, um, um, uh, you know, as empathetic as possible, 
and go ahead and uh, have the chat. And that's when we actually saw that there was a lot of uptake and we kind of started getting a lot of engagement. Interestingly, when we do get to the part when I talk about the LLMs, that's kind of what you do in the prompt engineering as well. You don't you don't basically uh, kind of specify the, the how, but you kind of mention the what. But that was one of our first learnings. Second is, as you can see um, in the image as well, um, the more you personalize it, the higher engagement that you get. So initially, uh, the chat prompt, we kind of, when it was a generic prompt, we were kind of doing an uptake of close to around two, uh, two three percent. Uh, and post personalization, what happened is we kind of, we went to straight to double digits, middle double digits. So it was a fairly, uh, fairly, um, you know, um, fruitful exercise in terms of personalization. Um, and then once we were doing a human to human chat, obviously we can, we could only do it, uh, do it during the office hours. And obviously the realization is that uh, if you kind of go beyond office hours or if you're doing multiple shifts, then the scale is expensive. Um, without going into the actual numbers, as I mentioned, you know, the uptake was kind of in, in the double digits. The North Star, one of the North Stars where we wanted to see, can we generate value for the company, the lifetime value, the uplift was, was fairly high. Um, and the, the North Star that we used in terms of, can we generate value for the uh, customer uh, or the user, we used CSAT and again, without going into details, it was, it was significantly higher than uh, what we were seeing in other uh, digital journeys. In terms of the other thing was, you know, what do they want to talk to us about? So this is where how we kind of, this is where we gained the data point in terms of most of them wanted to talk to us about job search. There are a few who want to talk about the apply process. And then there were a few other topics. But by and large, uh, you know, after two, three months of running this, we kind of were at a point where we um, what you know, had a conclusive set of uh, data points to indicate that conversation works. We have a good sense of, um, of uh, you know, what they want to talk to us about, and we are able to kind of generate a fairly um, quality experience for our end users. Um, and this is where this is where the next question kind of came in is, okay, you're able to do this. Can we do it at scale? Um, and that's where the question was, okay, now let's basically go ahead and um, bring in and build the AI uh, chat assistant. But that kind of came with its own set of questions in terms of, uh, Yes, people want to chat with a human, but do they really want to kind of uh, chat with a bot? Um, if so, uh, are we able to provide the same quality as the human? Are we able to, again, the same North Star questions in terms of are we able to generate value for the user? Are we able to generate value for the company? And can we actually do it at, uh, do it at scale? So we, as I mentioned, we went ahead and we built the AI chat assistant. In this case, we kind of used uh, Microsoft Bot Framework and Azure. Um, and our learnings from the from the uh, bot chat was first things first is um, it became a lot a lot easier to pursue the no scenario, which is where the user because if it's a straightforward things in terms of you know this is what I want this is what I'm looking for blah 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 that can be done by a form as well, where a conversation kind of comes in and where an AI assistant is able to kind of handle this a lot better is it can handle the no scenarios where the person says look, I don't like this job title, or I don't like this location, or I don't like this salary, and then have those follow-up conversations and then get to a point where you've arrived at what the user is looking for, and then be able to kind of generate that result. So um, the key purpose and the key benefit was handling the no scenarios. Second is now because we had a 24 by seven um, uh, uh, you know, service, it kind of opened up a totally different user persona for us as well. Uh, which is basically the out of office hours uh, traffic. And what that did was, um, A, obviously the volume definitely increased. You're able to service it, your you know, cost to service, et cetera. Uh, you're able to kind of manage it at scale as well. Uh, but it kind of changed the topic split as well. Uh, so whilst the topics per se remained the same, but the percentage split changed a lot. And this was A, because we you now had a slightly different user demographic as well. And B, what happened is now, um, because it was a fairly quicker process to kind of do the job search as well, and once the user gained confidence in that, they went on to kind of explore the other topics as well. So it kind of, this was another learning in terms of, uh, in terms of the, uh, the human to bot uh, service that we provided, the AI assistant. In terms of containment, again, uh, we were fairly, uh, fairly, we was actually, you know, slightly higher than the industry average. Um, uh, average accuracy, again, uh, very similar to the industry averages. We were, as I mentioned, uh, we were using Microsoft Lewis as our um, NLU intent engine. And uh, LTV, again, 
in this case, the, the lifetime value uplift was higher than that of a human. Our customer satisfaction rates were also higher than that of a human. Um, I have to say this, that do not uh, go by the fact that, uh, okay, so AI can do better customers, uh, you know, CSAT than human. It's also a function of how much training do you kind of provide to the, uh, the human on the other side. Um, so that they can bring in that element of service as well. So the takeaway from here was basically that you could match uh, in maybe some slightly do better um, customer satisfaction uh, compared to the human to human. Um, you could provide the LTV that is needed from a business case perspective and you could definitely do it at scale. And um, if you look at some of the some of the quotes that we kind of got when we were kind of looking for feedback from real users, the fact that you know someone's describing a bot experience to be kind and honest itself kind of gives you that element that you know there is an element of emotional uh, support that you're able to kind of bring into the journey, which is essentially what the what the idea was from from our side. Um, in terms of learnings come uh, off uh, between a human to human and a human to bot. Uh, first is a human to human time to market is fairly low you can very easily just you know take an um, take an interface in this case we kind of use twilio uh, flex um, quickly set it up it helps you kind of get those data points uh, understand the service get to a certain uh, sense of you know product market fit or otherwise uh, when it comes down to bot at least when you're dealing with uh, the intent uh, driven models um, there is a fair amount of training effort that goes, uh, time and effort that goes into training the intents, training the entities. Uh, now with LLMs, obviously the scenario has changed a little, but um, the time to market is nevertheless higher with the bot. Um, the agents kind of define the flow, um, and but uh, because and equally because there's a person involved in that, the ability to quickly change is is uh, kind of limited. When it comes down to the bot, however, it is far easier. It is, you know, flip of a switch and you can basically change the, uh, change the flow, keep changing the flow, keep experimenting. So your ability to experiment with uh, slight nuances or changes is a lot higher. Uh, with, uh, with the human, again, it's a function of the, uh, fun uh, of the capacity that you provide, but even otherwise from response rates perspective, there is an element of a queue buildup and in chat wait time. Um, in the case of a bot, obviously responses are instant, your dropouts are far lower. This was the interesting bit. Uh, when we kind of built our AI assistant, we also kind of built in an intent for the chit chat where it, you know, you allow for uh, off topic conversations as well. But actually what we saw is that with the human uh, chat, people actually tended to kind of go more um, off topic and, you know, try and connect with the, with the human on the other side. Uh, with the bot, most of the time they kind of kept it fairly transactional. Um, they probably because the pace was also fairly quick and they were getting quick responses, but very rarely did we actually find someone kind of go uh, off topic um, and, and basically discuss about uh, other things. Uh, in the case of human to human, obviously it is uh, 24 by 7 is expensive. The bot has the benefits of scale and cost. Um, and uh, when it comes down to the human based again uh, on the um, uh, on the kind of feedback that we received, people actually prefer to uh, prefer to speak instead of uh, you know typing it in, instead of a chat if they have that option. And in the case of a bot, people actually prefer to click rather than um, uh, rather than type. So click on the buttons, click on use the rich elements, use the forms rather than type. And in both cases, as I mentioned earlier, if you personalize it, if you're able to kind of bring in that element of emotion and um, you know visual elements to it, obviously your engagement ratios are higher. Uh, in terms of what's next for us, uh, it's essentially, we are obviously looking to kind of uh, broaden the, uh, the coverage in terms of journeys, other use cases. Uh, we are looking to kind of, we are already actually live with, uh, with certain journeys on uh, WhatsApp and SMS. Uh, and obviously we'll kind of enhance the web as well. Um, but overall, in terms of the uh, conversation quality, where you're talking about uh, all the layers, right from the channel IO to the NLP, where you are talking about intent recognition and uh, entity extraction and response generation, defining the policy where you're defining the flow uh, and uh, data perspective, we've actually been doing a number of, uh, number of POCs uh, with LLMs, large language models. Uh, we started with three, um, then we went on to 3.5. Actually, in the slide, I should have mentioned, we are now kind of experimenting with four uh, because, you know, obviously it has kind of evolved and you want to kind of get the benefits of uh, the RLHF, uh, the reinforcement learning human feedback uh, 
quality. But nevertheless, um, from our perspective, we are still in the process of trying to kind of figure out the best solution. So we have a number of, when we do our POCs, we are obviously kind of trying out multiple um, options to try and find the best solution for hallucination detection uh, for uh, there from a perspective from our data privacy, which I think now uh, both OpenAI and Microsoft are kind of offering uh, solutions for that. Prompt injection, again, we don't know to what extent is the risk involved in this, but uh, there are certain solutions that we're thinking of in terms of you know output validation and uh, any other ways that we can uh, prevent the prompt injection, bias detection by uh, identification and reduction in the responses. And um, initially, uh, and you know this is this is up till you know maybe in ten days back, uh, you know we were kind of th fairly thinking about you know what is the aspect of fine tuning, what is the cost involved in that. But now, obviously, with um, with uh, you know uh, ChatGPT allowing for a retrieval plugin, uh, probably fine tuning becomes uh, less of a worry for us. But nevertheless, I think um, a the fact that we have uh, LLMs available to us obviously is a phenomenal thing. It's a very powerful tool. And uh, we are going to basically leverage it as much as we can whilst keeping an eye out uh, for any of the challenges and then finding our solutions for those. So that's um, that's a very quick walkthrough of, of our job search companion. And I hope I was kind of able to um, meet all the goals that uh, I mentioned earlier, but uh, happy to take any questions. Thank you so much. That was a good presentation. We'll just wait for two minutes for uh, questions to pop. Mm -hmm.